You'll be able to create a floor plan like this by the end of this video, all on your smartphone, starting from a blank canvas like this. Now, a floor plan is just a top-down view of a room or a combination of rooms that have been attached together. For this exercise, we'll use this set of floor plans as a reference. Feel free to take a screenshot as we'll be using these dimensions. There are timestamps for this video just below, so you can jump to the doors or the objects like the beds, the sinks, and any other section in between. And for the app, we'll be using Magic Plan, which is available on the App Store as well as the Google Play Store to get started. So we'll start off with a new project and add a floor. We'll call this one Ground Floor. Add Ground Floor. From here, we'll start with our walls. We'll go to Insert. We'll go to Room. And for this one, we'll go Define Corners. We'll just call this a Living Room. And let's start drawing in our walls. So I'm matching these up to the floor plan we showed earlier, just roughly so that I can show how we can adjust these numbers after we've entered the walls in. Now with the basic shape finished, let's go in and type in our dimensions. Now for the unit of measurement, they're using meters here. For our first measurement, 7.5, and we'll go OK. And you'll see how it's adjusted all the walls accordingly, which is very handy. Let's type in our second one, zoom on in, tap on our dimension, we'll type in 5.5, and OK. From here, we'll just want to go around and do this to the remaining dimension. Go OK, zoom in, 1.5, OK. And with these dimensions typed in, it's got these two dimensions correct for us. So our last two, 295, tick, and 7 meters here, tick. Now to start splitting this room apart, I'm going to tap this bottom wall down here, and I'll hit split room. From here, I can click on this wall and drag it on over so it lines up. It's given me a little warning that I'm changing a locked dimension. A great little warning, but we're just going to hit confirm. Then we're going to tap this one just over here. We'll zoom back on out, tap our wall, and bring this one over until it, until it snaps into place. You'll know it's snapping by this little green icon just down here. When the green pops up, you'll know it's about to snap into place. So if we let go, it snaps it then into that position. We click this wall just before to split the room. If we do this one with the left-hand side wall and go split room, it's going to cut it horizontally. So depending on the wall that you select, it's going to cut the room differently. Just a heads up. Now to undo this, I'm just going to tap this little back icon just up here. And to zoom out to the rest of the floor plan, I'll tap in the gray space. Cool, and it's already starting to take shape. Next up, we'll select this room and we're going to divide it up into separate rooms. So I'll zoom on out. I'll select the side wall and I'll go split room. For this bathroom, I want 1.95, 1.95 5 meters, and we'll go OK. Then we want to create a little area for the toilet. So we'll click this wall again, split room. We'll tap this dimension here and we'll change this one to 1 1.3 meters and go OK. This time I'll tap the bottom wall. I'll go split room and I'm going to make this one one meter wide and go OK. So this is just going to be the hallway through from the living area into this little internal corridor. All right, so I'll zoom out, I'll click in the gray space, bring us back out. From here, we've pretty much got one wall left to go. I'll select this room here. I'll tap the bottom wall and I'll go split room and I'll make this 0.51 for the internal size of that robe. And we'll go, okay. We'll want to split the room again. I'll just split that room again. And I'll bring that up in line with this one just here and I'll snap into place. Now, if I just click out, you'll notice that we've now got some dashed lines. So this is where we've actually split a room, but they're overlapping. So if I tap this here and I tap this wall down the bottom and bring this all the way back up and lock it into place, then tap back out, then zoom out and tap out, we'll see that those dashed lines are now gone. We're almost there with all of our walls. So with just a few more splits and adjustments, we'll bring that up and then we'll bring this one up as well. And then I'll just split this wall here. Now I want this to be a hallway. So I'll tap on here. I'll tap and I'll go one for one meter and we'll go, okay. I'll jump into this room just here and it looks like it's lined up. So if I tap outside, we haven't got any of the dash lines. And with that, you've got all of your walls pretty much complete. Next up, we can jump in with our doors. They're actually even easier than the walls. For our first door, we'll go to our living space. We'll tap on our top wall and we'll go insert. Next up, we'll go to object. Then we'll go to doors. From here, I just want the patio door and I can position this amongst the actual wall itself. So if I tap and drag the actual door, I can position it in the wall itself. If I tap on the dimension, just like we did for the walls, and this time I'll tap in say 2.4 meters and go okay, we can change the actual dimension of the door. Now a cool trick, now if I click our door and I go duplicate, and I click and drag this door all the way down to our bottom wall, we can save a good bit of time. 
Now, if I tap on this dimension on the left hand side here, I can enter in the exact measurement that this door is offset from that wall. So we'll go 0.8 and go OK. And we can do the same thing for this one, 0.8 and OK. And then those doors are exactly positioned offset from that wall with the dimension that we've typed in. All right, so let's zoom back on out. From here, let's insert a few more doors. Let's go two doors. This time we're going to go hinged door. I'll click and drag this one just up until we get it to our wall. And I'm going to duplicate this one and bring it down to this one just here. Now for this one, I actually just want an opening. So if I go to swap door and I just go to opening, we can quickly change the door instead of having to go through and delete and replace it. Again, I'll take this door just here. I'll duplicate it, drag it on down, and I want to flip it inward. Now to flip it inward, I'll just go to rotate. It's going to push it in the other way. Now, if we want to change the orientation of the door, if we just tap rotate one more time, it's going to change the direction. I'll finish this up by duplicating this opening, putting it into the store room just here. Now with duplicating, we can only really drag it within that one room. So if I want to go to this bathroom, I just need to go insert, object, and up the top, it's got a recently used. So if I go to hinge door, I drag this one on over to here. The recent history can save us a bit of time. Now while we're here, I'll just go to this robe, I'll insert, now, if I want to find a particular type of door, let's say I want a double door, D-O-U-B-L-E, and I go search, I can find double hinge door just here, and I can click that one, which can save us a bit of scrolling. If I just go rotate, it's going to flip it out that other way. So that we've got a clean opening coming into this room just here. I'm going to tap on this room and zoom all the way in. I'll tap on this wall and I'll go delete. Then from here, if I zoom back on out, I'll do the same thing just for this wall here and go delete. Then I'll tap on this wall here and then I'll go to object and we'll insert a bifold and we'll go search and double folding door. Now to squeeze this so that it's the right size, I can click and squeeze this in with my fingers. It's nice intuitive that we can do this if we need to quickly put something together. Now it's always best to put in an actual dimension. So if I go 0.9 and go OK, it's going to set that bifold door. Let's bump it up a little bit to one and we'll go OK. So we've got all of our walls and all of our doors. You'll notice that all the rooms are named the same thing. If we want to change this, we just need to tap, then go to the show more information, just down that bottom right hand corner. And from here, we can just scroll on down until we get to the room name. If we tap on this, we can now rename what the room is called. If I hit X, then type in bath, B-A-T-H, and then go done, and then go close. If I zoom out and then tap in the gray area, we've now got that text level changed. Now, if you do want to change a room's name, it does have to have text in it from what I found. You can't just go X, then go done. When we go back out, it's still going to show that room. So if you don't want a label, I just hit X and then type in full stop, then go done. I'll close out. And from here, we haven't got our label anymore, which we could remove in other software later on if we really need to. Next up, one of the best bits are our objects. So if we tap on our room and we go to insert and then we go to object. For this one, let's go to bed, B-E-D, and we'll go search and we're going to go queen size bed. So that we can rotate this bed around, you can see the big blue rotating symbol. We'll tap that and we'll drag that up and across until that green hits and then we know it's going to be parallel. Tapping on the bed, I'll drag this one over to the wall. I'll tap on the room and let's start with our next object. From here, I'll go to object, I'm going to type in bed side. So bedside, we'll go search. Now I've got round table just here. I'll tap this one. Click this one and drag it just in next to our bed. We'll duplicate it and drag this one down to the other side. From here, I'll want to create a little table just here for our TV. So if we go to object, I'll type in TV. I'll go search. Go to this little TV unit just here. I'll rotate this one around. Now I want this to fit in just with our wall here. So I'll click and reduce just with two fingers like this and I'll tap and drag it into place. Tap the room, I'll go insert, object, and we want to chuck a television on top of that too. So let's go TV, nothing's showing up, so we'll have to use a different term. So if we type in television, television, and go search, there we go. Might have to play around with the terms just a little bit until we find what we're looking for. So we'll go to television, rotate this one around, and then drag this on top. Now let's make our television just a little bit bigger. Click and drag, and we'll drag those out. Yeah, look at that. Nice big television. All right, same thing for our other areas. If we go insert, object, type in toilet, and we'll go search. Grab a toilet, spin it around, lock it in place. 
Same thing for vanity, just down here. We'll go to object, go vanity, search. Might need to go sync. There we are. I think we've got better luck with that. We'll go sync with pedestal, flip that one around, drag that one down and we'll make it a bit bigger. So if we we'll click that and make it yeah, more substantial, that works. We'll go to our laundry, we'll go insert, we'll go object, type in wash for our washing machine. Now I want stack dryer. I'm gonna have this so it just represents the washing machine and the dryer. Typically I put text WM for washing machine and, and DIY for dryer. But in this case, this is gonna get us sorted. So if I put those two in, excellent. Let's go to our kitchen. We'll go insert, go to our objects, type in kitchen and then go search. We've got kitchen counter just here. Rotate this one around. We'll stretch this one out. So it's just or about the right width, then we'll drag it into place. I'll skinny this one up just a little bit, just on the width, and there we go. All right, now in our actual bench itself, let's go to object and we'll go to sync. We want to sync and we want to cook top. So let's start with a double sync, this one just here. Everyone loves a good double sync. You can wash up in one and rinse in the other, and then we'll go tap our room, we'll go insert object, then cook for cooktop. Go gas cooktop, flip it around, flip around so we can actually reach our buttons. And then I'll put that just into our bench here. There we go. So let's tap into our gray space and we're looking pretty good, but we haven't got a balcony for us to go out from that living room. So let's go insert, let's go to a room. Now, instead of actually tapping in our corners, what we can also do is just go add a square room. It's going to ask me the type of room. Now for this one, I'm just going to go balcony. If I zoom back out and I go edit layer, then zoom back out again, I'm going to drag this one and lock it in with these walls just here. I'll zoom on in, I'll tap in the gray space, click on my balcony. Then I'm going to pan over and I'm going to drag, I'm going to pan on over and I'm going to drag this wall just so it matches up with this one here and this wall so it matches up with this one just here. I want to get rid of these walls because I want it to be an open room like the balcony. So we'll just go delete and we'll delete this wall just here. Then I'll tap my gray space. We want somewhere to sit out on the balcony. So I'll tap the balcony. So I'm going to insert a chair and we'll go search. This armchair looks pretty cool here. Let's rotate that one around, drag that to there. We'll duplicate it, rotate it around and we'll want a table to go with those chairs. So let's go to table and we'll go to this small little coffee table just here. I'll put that one just in between. We'll set those and rotate those around. I'll tap in the gray space and we're looking pretty good. Now, the cool thing is we've drawn this floor plan, but at the same time, if we tap the 2D just up the top right hand corner, we tap 3D view. And then if we pan using both of our fingers, we can see that we've actually created a whole 3D model at the exact same time. So if we use our two fingers, we can pan around and see all the different stuff that we've put in from our bed all the way to our sink in our kitchen. Oh, and just a reminder, if you don't wanna miss out on the latest videos when they come out, make sure to tap the subscribe button as well as the bell icon below and you'll get the very next one. Now it's not just the 3D that we've got here as well. If we go back into our plan view just for a minute and we tap on our room and we double tap on a wall, we'll actually see an elevation view of that wall, which we can also type in the dimensions as well. If we click these little cross arrows, it'll spin us around inside of that room. To get back out, let's go to our 3D view. Yeah, that's looking pretty cool. Now, because you stuck around till the end, I wanna show you a really cool extra feature. If we hit this little export button just up here, we can export it as a PDF or as a PNG, or you can actually export the 3D model. So if I go in here, I can select which model types that I want exported. I'll go done. I'll tap on 3D model. It's gonna think for just a minute. It's now said that our 3D models are now available. So if I go okay, it's exported each of those different model types. So if I select say the IFC, I can then send that to my computer and open it up in a program say like ArchiCAD. Speaking of ArchiCAD, I've got a full tutorial going step by step how to create this floor plan that we covered today in the ArchiCAD software. So even if you have zero experience, I've gone through it step by step. So by the end of the video, you'll be able to draw this floor plan using professional software. I'll put a link to that video just over here.